حزنها يتعلونها لما يمر اسمك بس ما يسمك ذكره تسبقني عبره من اذكرك ونت اوجاعي يا حسين نادي والونه زادي لمصيبتك تلقم اضلاعي والناعي ينعه يومك يفجعه عرش الله ظل مصابك ناعي يا حسين لمصيبتك يا حسين من غربتك انا كل عمري القم بصدري تبقى على خدي عيني بنشايا الحزن رايا وكرب الغاية رايا الحزن رايا وكرب الغاية Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of 1376 with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. For the dear viewers who are just tuning in for the first time, the numbers I mentioned, 1376, are the precise years and the accurate years from today, which the first Arba'een occurred. This is where Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, Allah ta'ala alayh, went to visit the holy grave of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, 40 days after his martyrdom. This is where he met Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, and Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him. In this series of episodes, we have been sharing the experiences of the pilgrims who have come from abroad to visit the holy shrine of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, during the Arba'in pilgrimage. Also in this series of episodes, I have been examining and discussing the narrations regarding the significance of Ziyarat al-Arba'in according to Ahl Bayt, peace be upon them. It is narrated in Kamil's Ziyarat regarding the blessings which the angels who are descended from heavens with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam states when a person sets to to perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, 700 angels accompany him. Some on, on over him, some under him, some on his sides, some in front of him, and someone behind him. They will, accompany, they will accompany him until he reaches his destination. When he arrives at the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, the angels, an angel will announce, he will say, Congratulations, you have been forgiven all of your past sins, so continue the good deeds. When he sets to go back, the angels accompany him all the way back to his home. When they reach his house, they tell him, congratulations. Once again, they congratulate him for performing ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. Then they will say, we leave you in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will come to visit him every single day and night until his death. And after he dies, those angels, the 700 angels, will perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein on his behalf. If you think about it, in another narration by Imam al Sadiq, one ziyarah to Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, equals a worship of 1,000 years. So if you worship 1,000 years, it's equivalent to one ziyarah, one simple ziyarah to Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. So imagine 700 angels every day and night performing ziyarah for that program, for that za'ir who comes to the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein, 700 angels performing ziyarah every day and night on his behalf and all the rewards go to him. In another narration by Imam al Sadiq, he says, when you are about to bid your farewells to Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, don't forget to read the ziyarah. He says, say, 
look to the shrine of Imam al Hussein and say, Oh Allah, have mercy on me for begging you on the dust of the grave of the greatest grandson of the greatest being, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, for indeed I am in the place where your mercy is 100% accepted and 100% expected. When we hear this narration, we can see, and for the dear viewers who weren't able to view the previous episodes, Imam Sadiq salam states that the supplications, the dua under the dome of Imam al Hussein is 100% accepted. So when you say this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot return your supplications with nothing. He has to, it's not that we're ordering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed significance and blessings in the holy shrine and in the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, which no other holy place has or sustains. So it is very significant, my respected viewers and brothers and sisters, to come to visit the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein and to seek those blessings. Why? Because we really need those blessings in our lives. I mean, if you think about it, this life is filled with so many difficulties, so many difficulties in our ways. The only way to remove those difficulties and have a blessed life and a life filled with mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to come to perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. <laughs> از نوکراتم از کرم امام حسن شدم غمه تو موندم آخرش مردم با پیرن سیاه کفن شدم غمه تو موندم آخرش مردم با پیرن سیاه کفن شدم کربو بلا کربو بلا باز ببین چشمان خیز جز به گریه کنان آقا اسمم و بنویس In his previous Arba'in lecture, Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi mentioned a few recommendations to the pilgrims to the Zuwar who are walking on foot to the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein peace be upon him. He says it is very important to establish channels to, to establish some sort of page of an account whether Facebook account, uh, Twitter account, Instagram account or YouTube account to try and to strive to spread the message of Imam al Hussein and the message of Ahlul Bayt peace be upon him and he says it is very significant also Ahlul Bayt have also stated it is very significant that the lovers and the true Shia of Ahlul Bayt, the true followers of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, they should try and advertise for Zat al Arba'in to their family members, to their cousins, to anyone, to their friends, to anyone that they know, Muslim or non Muslim. Let them, let them come and experience the true blessings of Arba'in and the true blessings of Karbala and Imam al Hussein, peace be upon them. Why? Because when we, when we look around the world, we only find the peace in the heart. Peace, you know, it can be found anywhere. But the peace of the heart can only be found in the land of Karbala. He says, Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi also states that when you encourage others to come to Ziyad Arba'in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you according to Imam Sadiq alayhi narration. He says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you 10 times the, the person who was, go, who was going to perform Ziyad al Imam Hussein. Also, Ziyad al-Arba'in in particular has caused the conversion of many intellects around the world. Why? Because their friends, them going online and seeing the people who share. So it is very significant to share the experiences of Arba'in with other people online. As I mentioned on Facebook, on Twitter, just a small hashtag, Ya Karbala or Imam Hussein. And people will actually come and look at your accounts and see that, wow, Ziyat Arba'in has such blessings. Just share narrations of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, regarding Ziyarat al Arba'in. As we enter the season of Arba'in, it is very significant to share such things so we can receive the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if we couldn't go to Ziyarat al Arba'in due, uh, due, due, due to personal excuses, 
I mean, one can share and someone as a result will actually go because of his sharing and because of his posts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him the same as that za'ar who comes to the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. من شفت الأكبر سيوف ورماح الموت تواذره عبد الله وانا هود وينينا نبلة رضيعك ظلت جامرة ظهرك حينيته قلبك لقيته فوق النهار لا يمنى ويسره يا حسين راح القمار يا حسين آمن طبار تدري عباسه غيب انفاسك وانا للشفين عيني بجايك This portion of the episode similar to the previous episodes is dedicated to sharing the miracles which occur during Zat al Arba'een. In the previous Arba'een and similar to every Arba'een that has occurred, millions of pilgrims walk from their homes from Iran, from Kuwait from Bahrain, from India, from Pakistan, Af Afghanistan. People walk from their homes all the way to Karbala, thousands of miles. They walk just to reach the holy place of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. Why? Because they have been invited. And as I mentioned previously, the one who comes to the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein is invited by Allah and the Ahlul Bayt to come to perform ziyarah. He can't just choose to go. If he chooses to go, that means that Ahlul Bayt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have blessed him and have accepted that he comes to the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. Also, in the previous year, Imam Hussein TV network broadcasted almost for 15 days of live broadcast, eight hours a day, just to show and present to the, to the viewers and to our dear viewers the love that occurs and the passion of Imam al Hussein, which occurs and the greatest Shia gathering around the world 22 million pilgrims, 22 million Za'ir from last year. That's a huge number. That's the greatest gathering which ever happened on earth for an incident that happened 1400 years ago. Every year it's fresh, every year there's something new going on. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Imam al Hussein that his oppression will always stay fresh. It will never decay in history. It will never stay in its own place. It will rise and rise until the reappearance of our beloved Imam al Mahdi. May Allah hasten his reappearance. And also, so many non Muslims have entered the religion of Islam with the blessings and the passion and love of Arba'een. They see over, over television, over network media, they've seen Arba'een and they've witnessed the great march of 22 million people coming to the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. In the previous episodes, you will see people have converted to the religion of Islam come to walk to Ziyarat al Arba'een and to the holy shrine of Imam al Hussein. Why? Because they have truly understood what Imam al Hussein stood for and it is very significant to, to strive for the understanding. <laughs> This portion of the episode is dedicated to sharing the experiences of the pilgrims who have come from abroad to visit the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, during the previous Arba'een. Specifically in this episode, it is a continuation from the previous episode which entailed documenting the experiences of the Shia Muslims who have come from the UK as a group to visit the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein. The brothers in this episode discussed th the several and various services which were, which were provided on the way and on the road to Karbala. 
you will see inshallah and as you will see tents were set up all the way from every city from Iraq from borders up until Karbala tents were set up food enormous amount of food was cooked and handed out to the pilgrims of Imam al Hussein. People who were walking, as described by the spokesperson, they were treated like princes. They get, they get accompanied, they get accommodated, they get food, they get massaged, and on the way to Karbala, paradise on earth. And the spokesperson also says of the group, he says, such blessings can only be found on the road to paradise. And as everyone knows, Karbala, and as narrated by Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, Karbala is taken directly from heaven. It is a piece of land which entered earth a thousand years before all creation. So if you want to think about it, paradise on earth is legitimately the word when you say paradise. Because dua is 100% accepted under the dome of Imam Hussein. Healing is lies in the clay which is extracted from the tomb of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. Whatever you want, the desire, the needs, the sickness you have, may Allah forbid and may Allah heal all the believers of Amir al Mu'min and the Ahlul Bayt. Whatever you need lies under the dome of Imam al Hussein and lies in the land of Karbala. So, inshallah, stay tuned for this episode to watch the experiences of those pilgrims. Now it's 10 past 4, at half time, and uh, we are now approaching a poll number 400. So there is over a thousand polls, there's over a thousand polls to go through right now. And uh, there's not much of the group right now, everyone's there. Uh, we are currently at poll uh, 564. Uh, the brothers, as uh, you will see later on, are very, very tired uh, because they have covered, uh, most of them covered 564 poles. Today is the second day, um, it's 6 in the morning, I just woke up, uh, we're just going to have a pray and try to go to the market next door and have a breakfast and to continue work. Some of us are so tired, they are literally wanting to take a car, but alhamdulillah everyone is motivating each other and saying, I'm breaking up the same and try to continue to walk. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. 
Hallelujah. Husband and wife, they're walking together. Just follow to me, we'll get it together. Let's go. And he left me, said Ali. You're walking buddy. Oh, no. Let's go have breakfast. Let's go have breakfast. Because I'm my throat is gone and I'm dead. How is it? Beautiful. Beautiful. You're supposed to make a poem about the Harisa. Harisa. Throughout the whole journey, there are mawakib which have been set up by the servants of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. A mawakib is a group of lovers of the Ahlul Bayt who get together and set up their own stores and marquees. These servants will stand at their stores and beg the pilgrims to come in and have breakfast or whatever they are serving. Also at night they would beg the pilgrims to come in and stay in their marquee or building. These mokibs are usually named after a member of the Ahlul Bayt family. For example, the mokib which we stayed at last night was called Mokib Imam al-Sadiq The mokib was named after Imam al-Sadiq who is the sixth Imam. Today we woke up 6 a.m. in the morning, me and my brothers, to embark on our second stage of this journey towards Karbala to meet Sayyid al-Shahada alayhi wa sallam, salatu wa salam, al-Imam Hussain, and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. The reason why we walk this journey is in order to feel just a drop of pain in the sea of pain of Sayyid Zainab alayhi wa sallam. What she witnessed on this day has not been witnessed in the history of mankind. Therefore, despite the injuries and the wounds and the pain that we experience, we tend to adopt a resilient nature within us, which is sparked throughout this journey. And it's the goal that drives us. And the service is outstanding in Karbala, in Najaf. Oh, Hussein's love has encompassed the whole world. It has forced many individuals from Europe, from the Middle East, to come and visit him on this day, this blessed day. And inshallah, may everyone experience this beautiful experience through this journey towards Karbala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our du'as and our amals, as Shia Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. And this also ensures that we have remained steadfast on the path of Imam Zaman alayhi salam. This walk confirms our loyalty to Imam Hussein and Sayyid Zainab alayhi salam. And inshallah, Ya Rabb, may the numbers increase year by year. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Nearly 8 here, we're at pole 625, and uh, we've got 1,400 poles in total to the shrine. The group has been split up into different uh, uh, parts, and some behind me, some in front of me, some way in front. And this flag is uh, always just keeping me alive right now. Still going. One point, you're point, right? One point. Ashura is a school of lessons. Hussein taught me defiance. Abbas taught me selflessness. Zainab taught me patience. Qasim taught me sacrifice. Isbut al-lover's preference. Layla gave Ali al-Akbar. 
Hamza's last resemblance between the hands of Hussein, Hor taught me repentance, Abis taught me insanity is but a lover's science. Ashura was not a day. Ashura was not a day. It's timelessness, it's brilliance, it remains in the heart. Always a lover's. And we just went through the third checkpoint, and uh, I believe if you can look at this way, you can see um, millions of people are coming through, and uh, they obviously the security have to check quickly, otherwise we're being let carry back down. And uh, we're gonna go straight to the, the last uh, checkpoint before we enter Kabila, inshallah. هلا بالشباب مرتاحين الله يخليك فارغ هادي لو بياس نور عفوا يوغون فاصة هلا بالسيد، أنا شاي وين؟ يلا باي يلا شكرا يلا باي باي This year, to our benefit, we were joined by some inspirational people. With these were brothers Sayyid Ali Radawi and Sayyid Haider Jizani. Upcoming Noha recited which enriched the journey with their poetry for the love of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. And we were also privileged enough to have the poet Nouri Sardar and Sayyid Ali Al Nawab to talk us through the tragedies of the Ahlul Bayt and inspire us with their knowledge. I was raised in a house of giving and service. My visitors should feel at home, I know this I was raised in a house of giving and service My visitors should feel at home, I know this I smile when I see my grave receives a kiss And I'll make sure that when he is for sale he'll miss If my duty, I've awaited those who know me. Allah, I join now, I join in the Sab Sayyid, you and Mawlai, Abba Abdullah and Hussein. This is our second day walking from Najaf to Karbala. I am walking holding the flag that I have made from London, which I took round to all the Majalis during Muharram. For all Shia Amir al-Mu'mineen to write their hajjad, to write their prayers, all the people that cannot make it to Karbala this year. I have made this so that I can write all their prayers. They can write anything they, they desire, anything they want from Imam Hussein. So that when I take it to him to Karbala, I can put it inside the dharih and inshallah their prayers shall be answered. And insha'Allah, I will get thawab for this and for the steps that I'm taking towards Karbala. The reason that we are walking this way towards Karbala is to feel a glimpse of what the family of Imam Hussein felt during Karbala and the aftermath of Karbala. Insha'Allah, all our du'as are accepted and insha'Allah, the ziyara is accepted. Assalamu alaikum. We are at 
gonna, going to be stopping at pole 800 and the Shabab are waiting for us so we can have a short break until we make our way to pole 7, 886. Hello, big Shabab. Allah is at home. Nuri's got the fattest ball on his flag. Allah is at home. Assalamu alaikum. Allah is at home. We are at pole 886 in, in, in Mokib Imam Hussein television and we're here for a little nap and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna be praying then have some food and take a little nap before we head off to Karbala. We just had the Mom Hussein TV in Mokri Monaco and we are heading off to pole 1000 to gather everyone up and then make it to a pole 1100 where the Atab, Atab Imam Imam al Abbas is and, and then from there we will see if we have enough energy to walk, make it to Karbala tonight if not then inshallah tomorrow, tomorrow morning we will be there we will be heading off to Karbala <laughs> Second checkpoint and hopefully the last of the big checkpoints. Um, we're just arriving to Karbala um, and as you can see it's gonna get ram packed because this year especially um, it's, it's, so many people has come this year. Um, last year I remember they had only one lane uh, for Zuar to walk on. This year they've had three lines, three different roads for the Zuar to walk on. 
So it's going to be very packed, so we need to get there and try to get to the front of the queue as soon as we can in order to pass the checkpoint, inshallah. Due to the threats that the Shia and Iraq face every day from the terrorists, the Iraqi forces set up many temporary checkpoints between Najaf and Karbala. There are two main checkpoints where everybody has to pass through. The first one is at post 600, which is the halfway point between Karbala and Najaf. And the second one is at the border of the holy city of Karbala. <laughs> Staying here with Haydar. We've lost most of our group. No phone. Nothing. We're around 4, 1066. We're in the Atabel Shen. But we can't find our group, so we're planning. If we're lucky, we're going to find them in the Atabel Abbasi. If we're lucky. Hopefully. And we just found them. We found Nuri. Hassanam. I've been, I've been waiting for your boys for about three hours. Allah is sad. Allah is sad. Have you lost? Then you're not going to stay inside? Huh? We're waiting for Musa, we you know what? This is the Hatab al Abbasiyah, Madif al Abbas. Beautiful place. Take a quick rest here. So everyone comes. It's 10, it's 10 p.m. right now. We can barely walk. We just left Atabat and Abbas here. Which is at pole, pole uh, 1102. And we're trying to make our way to Mount Hussein now. In the middle of the night. Malawa, I think. We're trying to make our way now. And all the boys are split up. Everyone's just goes around, they don't know where they are, but we're all gonna make it, inshallah, safely and soundly. Yalla, yalla, shabab, shabab. It's 2 a.m. and the servants are making fresh up bread for the Zawar that we can pass at the same. You can see. Majori. Baba, very lazy. They stop in every five minutes. They take 10 break. 10 minutes break, which is very wrong. We are like one hour away. Inshallah, we can make it. It's Thank nearly, you, Inshallah. It's 12.20 now. And hopefully by 1, 1.30 we will be by Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Ya Allah. It's 12.30 now. This is the best massages and I don't have any complaints. This is the best massages. بعد ما شوف وإذا ما تجيني أقدم ظروفك أخاف من عوفك بعد ما شوف وإذا ما تجيني أقدم ظروفك طويلة رحلتي وخاف برجعتي بعد ما أشوفك ويا عباسي اختك انا ولا تبارح وكنت انت انت ما اسني وتصاب بروحني وفرقتك ذلتي شافك 
If I'm making it with I inside Allah now is a man وخاف برجعتي بعد ما اشوفك اه حيدا You look like you're gonna cry Yeah, very So tired But We're very short for the Hadra, alhamdulillah Walked a lot And Yeah Nearly there كربلاء as I step onto your sands you capture my eyes كربلاء I see heaven has been placed beneath your skies كربلاء I feel the darkness of grief within me arise كربلاء I feel my heart heavy with my wails and cries كربلاء Kilometers after 1456 bottles, we made it, but everyone is really tired. It's nearly the time is now 2:25. Alhamdulillah, we made it, and all the boys are literally tired. We started 30 of us, and now it's like a little group. Inshallah, we will come back tomorrow as now it's very busy and very crowded. And we will come back tomorrow nicely. We will have a shower, do the proper complete ziara in a group as we will meet each other. Thank you very much. Um, we're just on our way back to do our ziara. Um, we had a day or two rest from the walk from Nejef to Karbala. And um, we went into inside, we done our ziara, but unfortunately they didn't allow the cameras to come in. Um, but inshallah we're going Bain Haramain. To, um, to join some uh, groups for Matam or Latmiyat, inshallah, Bayna Haramain. So, inshallah, Abu Abdullah will accept it for us. Inshallah. <laughs> أسحف وكمل طريقي وصل للعباس هذا العشق ساكن بقلبي وآه يا قلبي هذا العشق ساكن بقلبي وآه يا قلبي من الأزل نطيتك واحترقت الأنفاس من الأزل نطيتك واحترقت الأنفاس خلاص أربعين يا ويلي وش أسوي ما أدري ليلة الوداع يا ويلي وش أسوي ما أدري أقف بالحضرة ونادي حسين حسين عمري أقف بالحضرة ونادي حسين حسين عمري أويلي على المذبوح وأويلي على المطوح وأويلي على العطشان وويلي على العريان وويلي على الضامي وويلي على خيار
دمي وويلي علي تامي وويلي علم خضاب وويلي علم تراب وويلي على الأطفال وويلي على زين The one memory that always brings a tear to my eye is um, apart from all the service that we had and all the, all, the, all the fun times we had, all the times that we served as brothers and I felt the brothership between each person through their bones, through their blood, um, I mean, but apart from all that, the most beautiful memory that I have which backflashes to me all the time and brings the tears to my eye is the smile, the mixed emotions that as, when, as soon as we got to Karbala from after the walk we were exhausted, tired, we wanted to go home but all, overall on top of all of that it's the smile when you get, when you get to Karbala and you look at your friend <clears throat> and he's like we made it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. When you see the Hadra in front of you, you've been walking for so long. You're, you've set yourself a target for you to hit. And that's reaching Karbala by foot. Um, and as soon as you reach it, to be honest, different kind of emotions come to you. You're happy that you're there. You're also sad of, of, because of due to the occasion that you're there for. But... It's amazing just to look at your brothers that are with you there and, and, and different people, all different people that you don't know. You can see the emotions, it's floating. It's floating in front of every single person's eye. Um, and that's just something beautiful. One of the memories, there was a lot of memories, but this one, I'm going to mention it, is when you, Murtad al uh we were nearly like... 15, 10 kilometers away from Karbala and then we lost you. We lost you and then your dad got really worried about you and we were in Atab al Husayniya, in Malif of Atab al Husayniya and apparently you were in Atab al Abbasiya. So I remembered everyone calling and everyone was worried about you. Why is Murtala? Why is Murtala? Why is the cameraman? That was just not good. Uh, because during Arba'in you can't co make calls easy. So, I remember one of the security guys, he had a, something like walkie-talkie or something. He contacted Atab al-Abbasiya. Alhamdulillah, they found you. You were just like relaxing, eating and talking to people. Staying here of Haidab. Huh? We've lost most of our group. <laughs> no phone. <laughs> Nothing. We're around 4, 1,066. We're in the Atabal Shen. But we can't find our group, so we're planning. If we're lucky, we're going to find them in the Atabal Abbasi. If we're lucky. Hopefully. There's a lot of memories uh, from the walk this year. Every year, the walk gives you memories that you never, ever forget. Um, and there's a lot of things I can say from memories that keep with me from this trip. I think what's nice about this trip is that we all went as a group collectively. So there was a good, I'd say maybe just under 20 of us walking uh, to Mohassin Islam together as a team. And it was something really beautiful because uh, some were younger, some were older. And it was a nice connection that we had together. You know, we'd help each other out. We'd, uh, we'd sometimes, for example, uh, joke around, sometimes even... Rem uh, remind ourselves of the spirituality and the reasons behind the walk. If someone got tired, then we'd um, speak to him and, and, and kind of encourage him to continue walking. If someone was hurt, we'd find him, uh, you know, for example, a tent that could massage his feet or, or give medication that would uh, help him with the walk. So it was, uh, it, it was nice that it was a, a collective group. Um, at the same time, uh, personal memories, I would say, is that uh, the first year I walked, uh, the whole way I walked without holding anything. The second year I walked, I decided to hold a small uh, a bus flag, uh, a very small one. And, and the, this past year when I walked, I, tr I, I bought a flag from the actual shrine, 
which is one that is kept between the the new dome, which is the new dome, which is visible, and the old dome. Uh, so they hang these flags up every day. So I bought it from the shrine, and I found a big piece of uh, wood to 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 tie it onto, and I carried it, alhamdulillah, ninety percent of the way. Um, and I felt that it it was a duty of me um, to hold the flag of Abbas, to hold the flag of Mu Hussein alayhi salam, uh, and uh, I suppose the greatest feeling was presenting. Uh, that flag to Abbas when we finally saw the shrine after such a long time, after two days of walking, uh, and ask him to, to, to watch as a small servant has, has carried this, uh, this flag. Um, so I think, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the beautiful thing about this walk is that even though it was a personal journey for everyone, everyone had their own wishes, everyone had their own things that they wanted, everyone had their own reasons for walking, everyone had their own kind of emotions, but at the same time, you had that level of emotion which was a personal one, for example, me holding my flag and presenting it to Abbas and asking him what I wanted, or asking him to, to look at the service, the small service, at the same time, you had that emotion of everyone to get, uh, collectively, to, uh, collectively together. So, for example, once we reached the shrine, I remember it was me, uh, Ali Radhawi, and Haida Jezani, and... Uh, uh, we we stood in front of the shrine and each of us were like silent and crying and and, and speaking to the imam, um, and you could and people could tell that we you know we've been walking for 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 such a long time and we were very tired, um, so we we all stood there watching the imam and we're just crying and 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 speaking to the, the to the imam. And then we walked to down the road to see Hussein's dome or Hussein Islam's dome, and again we were crying and and kind of making our wishes and speaking to the imam, and then once everyone had kind of said what they need to say, we all looked at each other and kind of, you know, hugged each other, embraced each other for doing such a long walk. Got back, uh, you know, f found a way to get back home and had a lot of, uh, and you know, had some jokes and had some, had, had some laughs as well. Uh, not, not, not laughs in a way that we were mocking the, the occasion, but laughs in a way that we were celebrating our brotherhood kind of thing. So it, w it was definitely a memorable walk uh, for those, for all those different reasons. <laughs> Who serves us food? Who does he see behind him? He sees on his feet pouring the food. Dispass him when they reach Karbala's border. Who welcomes them? Abbas cries out, O oh, servants of Hussein, welcome. His brothers by his side, his mother cries in pride. His Brothers by his side. The one thing that his I can take back into my everyday life from, uh, from the ziyara is brotherhood. Reason being is because no matter where you come from, be it from the Middle East, be it you're born and raised in the UK, I mean, we had people with us from all different ages, from all different backgrounds, not just that, um, from different maraja, um, from different areas around the world. We were all together. We were as the Prophet used to say, a united Ummah. It was unity, it was beauty. Also, the reason why I say brotherhood is because I took that back. And since I came back from my ziyarah trip from Arba'in, I, I have to honestly say that I don't look down on anyone anymore. Be it he believes in what I believe, be it he has a difference of opinion, because at the end of the day, we are all one. We all go back to the same God, we all go back to the same Prophet, and we all follow the Ahlul Bayt, alayhum as -salam. Many lessons were taking place as we were walking to Karbala, from Najaf to Karbala, as we were around with people with knowledge, people with ambition, people with love, you know, people with, who, who are their only intention is to unite with their brothers and sisters in Karbala and to share the joy, to share the tears that they finally made it to Karbala. But one, something that I actually learned, and Alhamdulillah, Shukur, it sets something year by year, every year I go, it sets something to my eyes. Um, and that thing is something that we look at nearly every single day, we mourn about every single day, is the patience of Sayyidah Zainab. For a person, for a normal person to go through so much grief, through so much massacre, through so much oppression, it's just so hard for a person to take in. Sayyidah Zainab took it in. And she showed to the mankind, she showed to history, she showed to the future the meaning of patience. And something that I did learn through this trip is to be patient 
um, I mean the whole the, the one one kind of way that I take the walk to Karbala is by setting yourself a target. Um, obviously, at that time in Arba'in, our target was to reach Karbala, and say that Zainab's target was to reach um, her brothers, you know, her brothers' children's. That's that the objective was to reach Karbala. So by setting yourself, this is something that I can use day to day. This is what everyone can use day to day life. When you set a target for yourself, no matter how far it is, we walked, we went through pain. A lot of brothers went through pain. But at the end, we actually got to Karbala. No matter how long it took, no matter how many blisters came up, no matter how many stops we took, no matter how many breaks we took, we made it to Karbala. And that's something that I learned is being patient through your journey towards success, towards studies, towards anything, patience will always be the number one thing that will strive you even further. I would like to bring up a, a hadith or a riwayah that was narrated by Kumail ibn Ziyad, the famous narrator of Dua Kumail. He says, one day Imam Ali salam held my hand and we, we went outside the city of Kufa. We started walking, Imam Ali took me and I accompanied the Imam until we arrived in the outskirts of the city of Kufa, close to the graveyard. And the Imam sat down, I sat down on the ground. There wasn't anything around us. It was pure desert, close to the graveyard where there were many uh, people buried. And being close to the graveyard itself gives you a specific and special um, emotional experience. Imam Ali salam sat down on the ground. He took a deep breath and he said to me, O Kumail, in al qulub awiyah. The existence, the, the, the intellect, the, the heart, the emotion, mm -hmm. the physical being of, of mankind are containers. In al qulub awiyah. Uh, or a close translation to that be to, to that would be that O Kumail, the best of these beings, the best of these existence, the best of these hearts uh, is that the ones that can take in and and store and acknowledge the best of its knowledge and the best of its experiences. O Kumail, the Imam continues, O Kumail, an nas thalatha. Imam Ali alayhi salam categorizes people into three different categories. O Kumail, the first is alimun, the second is muta'allimun ala sabili najat, and the third is hamajun ra'a. To summarize, the Imam is saying, O Kumail, be aware that people are divided in, into three categories. You are either a scholar, you are either a person of great knowledge, who spent his life gaining and learning of life, or you are on your way in gaining life's knowledge and experience. A person seeking knowledge so he can save himself from the darkness of ignorance. Or just normal ignorant individuals who are taken every time a wind, a gust of wind or thunder comes, they are moved as the the, the plants or as the um, leaves on the trees are moved when wind hits them. What the Imam is trying to say to Kumail or Kumail, and this is a lesson for every single one of us, especially the young men and women, who have an interest for these kind of religious events, have a, 
a desire to experience these kind of emotional trips. Because our main aim, our main objective when we go for such a religious event, for such a walk, specifically dedicated to the events of Ashura and Karbala and Imam Hussein, this great figure uh, who sacrificed his life not only for the sake of those who read the Quran or for those who call themselves Muslims. Imam Hussein alayhi salam sacrificed himself for the whole of the humanity. What he provided was for everyone. Not only for those who live in the Middle East, who speak Arabic. No. Imam Hussein alayhi salam stood for freedom. Today we have many organizations calling for the freedom of man, freedom of speech, freedom of expressing your opinion, freedom of choosing whatever religion you want for yourself. Imam Hussein alayhi salam wants us to be either a knowledgeable person who has saved himself or muta'allim. I, I am still seeking life's knowledge. I am still seeking to gain the experience. And where better to gain experience and knowledge? But from the school of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which sometimes resembles in walking from Najaf to Karbala to see the millions of emotional people who have this, who carry this emotion. Well, one thing I learned from the walk and, uh, and I brought back to my uh, everyday life is that on the walk, in, like, during the walk from Najaf to Karbala, uh, it was tiring. Obviously, you're walking 90 kilometers. It's not an easy walk, is it? But it's tiring, as I said, and uh, it's like you're walking on glass when you finally get to uh, the province of Karbala. But I'll tell you what, every step you take will get you stronger in your everyday life and not just your spiritual life. In some respects, but and uh, every time I took a footstep, I uh, remembered that every time you uh, take a footstep uh, on the walk of Arba'in, that 70 million angels pray for you. And uh, I also uh, thought about if I can conquer, if I can actually overcome 90 kilometers of walking in two days, then I'm going to be able to overcome anything I want, hopefully to pass my exams. That's my main uh, objective, and with the power of Abba Abdullah, anything is possible. Karbala, we're coming, 40 days and counting. Karbala, we're coming, walking because in our eyes he is priceless. Walking because anything else is worthless. Walking because I see a young girl and a flag she is holding She reminds me of Ruqay I start crying I see a woman at the roadside She's standing She reminds me of Zainab for Abbas waiting She stands there on her nose and cries even hearts of stone She stands there all alone And cries even hearts of stone The tears that flow Watching these things are endless What would I recommend to people that are doing the work for the first time? Well, in my experience personally and seeing other people do it The first time is always the hardest time Because your body is just not used to walking for 90 kilometers From one city to another city, to another city over a period of two days it's definitely not as easy as it sounds. Um, the body has to get used to walking that much distance. Um, so I would suggest, I mean, I, th I think other people have, have given practical uh, solutions and advice. On a spiritual level, I would say that no matter what, do not give up. There's always that incl inclining in your head to kind of get in a car and take a taxi and, you know, feel like you, you've done enough. Even you know, when it comes to the extent where you've got blisters on your feet and your feet feel literally, the best way to describe it is it feels like you're walking on broken feet. So it's not, uh, it's not an easy thing at all, at all. But at the same time, I think we have to think to ourselves, this walk, the way I want 
the, the way I would advise people to see this walk is that it's it's an oath to the imam and an oath to yourself in that you are proving to the imam how much you believe in him and how much you love him and how much you want to express uh, and you know you want to express how much you really want to follow him so i'm going to say something very controversial but some people for example might walk halfway then you know get in the car and think you know i've done a good job but other people know they'll walk it the whole way from where they started there straight away without even thinking twice about getting into a car and even though i don't want, even though it's it, it's it's it may be seen by some as just a walk but at the same time it's it shows you, it really does show you how important the imam is in your own life. Um, so you realize something about yourself in that. I mean, for example, Muharram, when you come to Muhammad Hussain alayhi salam, you know, we go to Majalis, we do Matam, Latum, we do all these kind of things uh, and and try to gain closeness to the imam. But it's the, that walk is the one thing where, you know, you have this kind of, you know, it's like the road itself is telling you, you know what? All your life you've been doing majalis. All your life you're saying, "I love Hussein." Now is your time. Now, now is your chance to prove it. Let's see how much you really love Hussein. If you can really walk that whole distance without complaining once, uh, for the sake of Hussein and Islam. So, I would suggest that you have that mentality in your head that I'm going to prove uh, myself to the Imam, and I'm going to prove my relationship to the Imam, and I'm going to show the Imam how much I believe in him and his message. Okay, what is the one thing that I recommend people to do? Before they go towards the walk of Imam Hussein in Arba'in, on Arba'in, in, uh, towards Karbala. Um, well, I would recommend it to wear um, uh, comfortable shoes. But at the same time, there was a few people that were wearing comfortable shoes, but um, uh, they got a few blisters and it was a bit tight, so they ended up taking the shoes off. But then again, there was a few people that went wearing slippers. Same thing happened to them. There's a few people that went barefoot, so without socks, without shoes. In the end, they end up putting bandages on their leg and walking. So to be honest, as for me, I, I recommend that you wear socks and slippers. That is the best thing. Socks to protect your legs from any dirt, from any stones, from anything. And slippers just to let the air in. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about um, uh, feet and all of this and, and walking. And To be honest, it doesn't really matter. Um, but one thing I recommend people to do before they go for the first time is just read, just just research a bit about. Okay, we, we understand we're all Shia, we're we're all um, uh, we're all going towards one person. We know who this person is. We know who Imam Hussein alayhi salam is. We know the Ahlul Bayt. But just research about that one person, about what he went through during his lifetime. Okay, we understand. We re we hear all this in lectures, but sometimes it doesn't stick. So. Before you go, just research about what he went through in life and all the struggle that he went through, what his family went through, what his daughters went through. Um, j just understand um, uh, in a way so it can give you an insight of why you're walking towards Imam Hussein alayhi salam. The one thing that I will recommend to all the visitors for the Ziyar of Arba'in during the walk is to forget everything. You know, you need to forget your social life. You need to forget what you left back home. If you're traveling, for example, like us from the United Kingdom, I actually, honestly, I forgot that I even worked at Ahl Bay TV. I, I, I don't mean to put it this way. I forgot that I had cousins, I had friends, I had relatives, because my aim was just to get to Abba Abdullah alayhi salam. So you have to put everything 100%. When I say this, I mean your akhlaq, your decisions, the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act, because you're representing what a visitor of Imam al Hussein is. And that will be my advice. Having said that, the main advice I would recommend is that you need to help everyone. You need to motivate everyone. You need to motivate yourself. You need to encourage others. You need to encourage yourself. And when I say that, I mean that if you see someone in need, do give him a hand. If you see someone who needs a place to stay, someone who needs rest, someone who needs just motivational talk, do it because it helps each other. And I'm saying this from experience because I remember when, if I'm not mistaken, um, the last time we all met up, I don't remember what poll number it was. I think it was after poll 800, but we got to about poll 1000. And I think I was walking with uh, Sayyid Haider Jaizani. And I'm going to be honest and I'm going to say we both looked at each other I don't want to speak on his behalf, I'm speaking on my behalf that I, I, I couldn't do this anymore. My legs were aching and I just had thoughts going through my head that 
we normally use the term I've cracked, but I don't want to say I've cracked in a way where I just don't want to do it anymore because at the back of my head, I still wanted to go and I knew that was my goal. So I set my target and I looked at Haidar and I told him, look, let's just talk to each other. Let's just say, for example, what the say the Zainab go through. And I promise you, that's, that's one of the main things that made me carry on. And um, I remember we entered the, the province of Karbala and now we're looking at each other. And I'm saying Haidar Jizani because I was with him mostly during the walk because I guess we get along very well. And we got to a point where we actually looked at each other once more, one more time and we said, let's catch a car, let's, let's, we call them Satuta. I'm not sure how you pronounce that in English, but we said, let's, let's, let's get a ride to Karbala. But then I remember I was like, Haidar, what's the point? We're like, we're almost there. Let's just carry on. And I'm not going to speak on his behalf, but um, I'm speaking on my behalf. And I remember saying, what does Sayyidah Zainab go through? I'm, they walked her all the way from Karbala to Sham and we're walking for a few few hours, if not a day and a half, two days, and we're complaining. This is Sayyidah Zainab we're talking about. So that helped us motivate each other. And Alhamdulillah, we reached our goal of getting to the city of Karbala. When we're the millions on his grave, I descend I'll say I walk all this way to on you, peace and The beauty of this walk only you comprehend And I will return each year until my life's end Till I'm old and frail I'll walk on this trail till I'm old and frail I'll walk on this trail Yearly in the dress of death for you I'll dress walking because anything else is worthless Walking because anything else is worthless Two years, this is my third year, and I already booked six months ago. I booked my ticket to ensure that I'm going. Um, it's like part of me, I don't know. I haven't been to Hajj, I really want to go to Hajj. And tonight and tomorrow, people are going to Hajj. But Arba'in is part of me, I can't, I can't, I don't know. I think it's wajib for everyone, if you can, obviously to live this dunya, to live this daily life, uh, to leave everything for one week, 10 days, and go to Arba'in. For me, it's like day of judgment. Everyone is walking in one direction. Everyone is wearing black. Everyone has one aim. And they all say, yeah, the Bekeh are saying. The reason why everybody loves this journey is because um, the love that you feel, the beauty that you feel within yourself um, during this whole period of walking, by the time you get to Karbala, and even before setting off, it's, it's just an amazing feeling. A feeling that cannot be explained, no matter how many words can be put out. Um, I mean, Sayyidah Zainab, salam Allah alayha, she 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 planned this route for us i mean i believe it's all been done purposely and she showed us that if you really do love something if you really do adore something appreciate somebody then you will do whatever it takes under any circumstance to get there i mean in her case Abu Abdullah al Hussein was, was left in Karbala. Abu al Fadl Abbas was left in Karbala. Ali Lakbar, who is no, no, no older than a teenager, he was left in Karbala. Atifl al Radi' he was left in Karbala. So many different other shuhada, who are, a lot of them were companions of Amir al Mu'mineen, two of the companions of Imam Hassan, and the companions of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And they were all left in Karbala. And these people, you have to love them. If you don't know who they are, you'll still love them. 
just by hearing their stories and hearing um, their miracles. So this is the reason why everyone, I think, I, well, I don't think I know, this is the reason why everyone walks to Karbala, shedding their tears with so much love, is because people like Abu Abdullah Hussain, like Sayyidah Zainab, they lost their, li their, their, their lives, they, they sacrificed their children, they sacrificed their families because of the love they are given to us. Alhamdulillah for that. If I had the chance, if I had the chance to do the walk again, would I and why? To be honest with you, um, when the time of Arba'in comes, I don't see how anyone can kind of sit back and say, yeah, you know, I went last year, or I'm going to go next year. I think I'll just chill out in London and, you know, attend the Mujahidah here kind of thing. Me personally, I think that Arba'in is the time where no matter what you're doing, you throw it away, you give it up and you go straight to the Imam because whatever you give to the Imam, Number one, whatever you give to the Imam, he gives back to you, be it the price of the ticket that you paid, be it the hardship that you go through to get there. Whatever you give the Imam, it's like an investment. He gives it back to you and more, and that's without a doubt. Um, on another level, is simply, does the Imam not deserve it? It reminds me of a story uh, about the day of Ashura, where there was a, a man who didn't want to fight against Imam Hussein, but he didn't want to fight with him. So what he done was, he said, what I'll do is I'll go to the army of Yazid, but I'll stand at the back, right at the back. And it was a very big army, of course. I won't fight any, sword, I won't fight any arrows or use my sword or anything. I won't, I, won't, uh, look at, I won't participate in anything that's going on. So he went to the day of Ashura. He was standing right at the back. I don't think he even saw anything that happened. And he went home. He had a dream where he saw the Holy Prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. I believe he was either wailing over Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or he was... He had the dust of Hussein on his head or something like that. And uh, he, t he looked at the man, he said, you, you killed my son Hussein. The man protested and he said, but, oh Prophet, I didn't, I didn't shoot an arrow, I didn't use a sword, I didn't even see anything that happened, I, I didn't do anything. And he said, the fact that you were there in the army, Yazid, in the army of Yazid, the fact that your, your number, your presence, contributed to the vast number of soldiers in Yazid's army put fear into the heart of Zainab and that contribution is you know you killed the Hussain basically so when you think about that story and you think about people that you know time of Ashura Arba'in comes and they're like yeah I don't really want to go I've got things to do I went last year I'm going to go next year whatever you think to yourself you know what that one number of yours that can contribute to the how many millions that are walking towards Imam Hussain Just like that, person, that, that person's presence put fear into the heart of Zainab, that number can put joy into the heart of Zainab. That number can put joy into the heart of Hussain. You know, when Hussain sees 13 million, for example, walking towards him, if you walk with him as well, he will be like, you know what, there's 13 million and one walking towards me. Thank you for contributing to that number. So personally, I don't think that Anyone should sit at home during Arba'in. It's not a holiday. It's, it's, it's doing what must be done to keep the flag of Hussein alayhi salam high, to, to show the world the power of Hussein alayhi salam. And every single person that sits at home without having any, really, any excuse not to go is not doing justice to the flag of Hussein alayhi salam. And like I said, that's a controversial thing to say, but I truly believe that. So me personally, would I do the work again? Yes, I'll do it. And I'll do it every year because... Number one, it's what Hussein deserves, and number two, it, it is something that benefits Hussein alayhi salam, Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and even myself. So yes, I will do it, inshallah, every year. Uh, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never takes this opportunity away from me to, for, to walk to Muhammad Hussein alayhi salam every year, because it is the greatest honor anyone can have. Walking because anything else is worthless Walking because anything else is worthless when with the millions on his grave I descend I'll say I walk all this way to a new peace And the beauty of this walk only you comprehend And I will return each year until my life's end Till 
I'm all dead and frail I'll walk on this trail till I'm all dead and frail I'll walk on this trail Yeah, in the dress of death for you I'll dress walking because anything else is worthless Walking because anything else is worthless Forty days and counting Karbala way coming Forty days and counting Karbala way coming Walking because in our eyes he is priceless Walking because anything else is worthless because anything else is worth Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, my dear viewers, thank you very much for tuning in this episode of 1376. Hope to see you, inshallah, on the streets of Karbala in this Arba'een pilgrimage and to document your experiences and see the true blessings which occur and the true miracles which occur in Ziyad al-Arba'een in the Holy Land of Karbala. And for the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view the previous episode, they can go on our YouTube channel at Imam Hussain 3 TV to view this program and other programs. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tupia al-Khadir Aini ben chai